everyone, Nicole Cordova is here and today in this episode, we are finally doing the review for the question and answer portion for Bini Bining Pilipinas 2021. But before we dive right into the Q&A portion, I want to acknowledge the girls also who did well in their opening statements because this time around, it's a new segment that was introduced in Binibining Pilipinas. And I feel like since we're in this pandemic, there would be a lot of other pageants that would require more speaking engagements for girls, especially on stage, like speeches, opening statements like this, and final statements, for example. So I want to commend the girls who did excellently in this portion. So the first girl on my list is Patricia Garcia. I love how she touched on governance because I feel like that's really the huge difference in COVID response in every other country. That's why we got different results as well. So I'm glad that she made that bold choice without sounding too political that you will kind of be scared and you will hold your breath while listening to her. So good job, Patricia. The second candidate on my list is from Iloilo. She is Karen May Laurie and she spoke about mental health. And I love how this got really personal for her because I feel like the opening statement is the opportunity for girls to share what affected them most in the pandemic. And in a way, what affected you the most during quarantine, for example, would tell a lot about you as a person. I remembered her video that she submitted during our workshops and she spoke about struggling through her mental health in the pandemic. So I knew that it was something very personal for her and I feel like it was also something that a lot of people needed to hear. Meiji Cruz, on the other hand, I felt gave a really good general overview of the pandemic as like the great equalizer, nobody's safe from it, whether Whatever social economic class you belong to, you are not protected from this virus, especially at the time before when there were no vaccines yet. So, hindi naminili itong virus na to. But even though it was just a general statement, I felt like Meiji had a really good way of expressing herself through her face, through her gestures, her body language, which I feel makes her a good speaker. So, congrats to you, Meiji. Dashmin Dimakulangan makes it to my list as well because I feel like out of the top 13, if I'm not mistaken, she's the only one who really focused on what her province, Albay, went through during the pandemic. And I feel like that's really important because you're representing your province on stage, you're wearing the sash, so it's really good to tell their story as well. So that's why Dash gets points from me. And to round up my list, we have, of course, Cindy Obenita, who talked about the fearlessness of the Filipinos at kung saan ba natin nauhugot ito. So I feel like even though hindi masyadong wordy yung opening statement niya, it didn't contain lots of jargon or anything. It was delivered simply um, and in her own way. I felt like it was delivered powerfully and it showed how advanced her level was as a speaker as well. So congratulations to all the girls who I think did really well on their opening statements. I am a proud mentor right here. And now it's time to do our Q&A review. So I would be including two special girls who I think should have garnered a higher position that night. Maybe sentimental favorites ko lang sila after the Q&A, but I would also want to give them recognition for the good job that they did in this round. And the first girl is Francesca Taru. The judge is under Secretary Benito Bengzon Jr. Our chairman of the board. Good evening. Good evening. Here is the question. Given the pandemic situation now in the Philippines, should vaccination be a choice or a mandate? Vac vaccination should be a choice. And I still remember the days when we were all longing for vaccines to be created. And now that vaccines are available, we tend to get hesitated because we fear of the side effects. But I encourage everyone to choose to get vaccinated because this is the big step for us to move forward and to protect ourselves and our loved ones. Thank you. 
Alright, so the reason why I included Francesca Taruk in my list, I don't know if she was also in your list, but it's actually a tricky question for her because of the current climate that we have for vaccines now. Like for example, there's scarcity of vaccines, there's a lot of vaccine hesitancy, especially when it comes to the brand as well. Like it even got to a point where we are politicizing the brands of vaccines. So for Francesca Taruk to actually answer this question simply and practically and just based on her own experience and and what she probably heard from other people that's what I really appreciated about her answer because right now the government is also trying to balance like the rights of the individual person like every person should have a choice right even though she began her answer with yes people should have a choice which is true regardless of anything but she ended her answer by saying that we should also try to educate them and encourage them to get vaccinated to see the bigger goal see the bigger picture of achieving herd immunity for example so I feel like she gave um, a simple response but then it was quite a proper and correct response as well that actually balanced um, both sides without having to shun anti-vaxxers for example the next girl on my list who is now my sentimental favorite but unfortunately did not garner a spot in the finals night is Graciela Lehman I have chosen Mr. Enrique Hill good evening Bini Bini good evening sir hi your question is what are your thoughts about romantic relationships which began and developed on social media during the pandemic lockdown? To be completely honest, there is nothing wrong with loving relationships that comes from social media. Because as we all know, we have harnessed the power of social media. And this is something that we should celebrate because love knows no time, love knows no place. Even at social media, we can meet, meet someone and we can be in love. Thank you. Thank you so much, Graciela. These are one of the few answers that night actually that made you feel things. Alam mo yung kinilig ako habang pinapakinggan ko yung sagot ni Graciela. And I thought that would have had earned her um, a spot in the finals. Actually, si Tita Lavinia of Titas of Pageantry already told me that, you know what, Graciela could actually be fit for Miss Grand International. But at that time, I only saw the girls' photos. I never really saw them in person nor have I seen them perform. So I was honestly not convinced that time when Tita Lavinia told me, but seeing Graciela Liman in rehearsals and when she performed that night and when she gave that solid answer for me, I thought she was deserving of a placement. I mean, her styling was on point, her hair was on point, her makeup was perfect that night. She also had a really gorgeous gown. And now it makes me wonder actually, na, since she didn't have her number on during question and answer portion, sabi ko una talaga kay Kat na, naskoran ba siya ng judges? Because I don't know if yung nag appear dun sa judges tabulation is her name or her number lang. So I hope she got scored naman. And now we move on to the Q&A performance of our crown queens. Starting off with our Binibining Pilipinas second runner-up, Meiji Cruz. Hello, Meiji. Hi, Miss Kylie. Hello. My question is, these days, beauty queens are also considered as beauty athletes with all the training we undergo. What is your message of inspiration to all Filipino athletes who are competing in the forthcoming Olympics in Japan, given the pandemic situation? As a candidate myself, I understand I com and I completely agree that we are like athletes because we, re we are required to be disciplined. We are required to give our 100% passion and focus on whatever we will do. And to our athletes, I know that you are also waiting for this to happen again. And this will happen again in, the, in Japan and, and it's a good sign and it means that there's hope and we are go back to normal. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ken. All right, so Judge Kylie actually gave context prior to the question itself 
But the problem is, Meiji focused on the context more than the question. So she focused on agreeing that beauty queens actually train like athletes. So what Meiji could have done instead is give a message of hope and maybe even support to our Filipino athletes who are going to be competing in Tokyo 2020. Or maybe a good way to approach this question is to compare what staging a pageant in a pandemic means and juxtapose that to staging an Olympics uh, in a pandemic as well. So I think you can derive a lot of experiences from that and explain the symbolism behind that, that maybe there is newfound hope, maybe the world is getting better, which Meiji tangentially touched on, but it could have been a better imagery that way, like staging events in the pandemic again. like. Does this give you a sense of normalcy? Does this, um, is this a sign of hope for you? So those are different ways that made you could have answered this question. Up next, we have our Binibining Pilipinas first runner-up, Gabriel Basciano. Good evening. My question is, in what ways can a female public servant or politician can be more effective than a male politician? Well, I really understand that all of us are doing our best to, be, to give the best service to everyone. And I can say that men servants are very strong when it comes to making decisions. And with women, they are very, um, they are very passionate when it comes to the things that they are doing. And they're very sensitive with the feeling of the other people. And that's what makes women servants different from men. So Gabby was given a very controversial question, but I feel like with how the question was phrased, she was actually given a slight advantage to not have to mention how men fare against women either. Like she could have just focused on the strengths of a woman leader instead. Like what different thing women leaders can offer. But then in her answer, she actually spent more time talking about how men are differently capable compared to women. So in questions like this, for example, I always wish that the candidates would offer a new angle in answering this question because it's always like women are more sensitive, more emotional, uh, and that's an advantage compared to men. So let's think of another edge of women compared to men. Like maybe our communication style, for example. I feel like women are more approachable compared to men because we are naturally nurturing. So it has to be something different, you know? Like think about it yourself. You are a leader, you're a woman leader in your own community, in your own way, in what ways do you tackle an issue differently compared to the men leaders in your industry, right? So that's how you kind of conjure an answer for that. But I would like a really different answer for this. Hindi pong babaliin talaga yung tanong na to. I feel like Gabby's answer is really, really safe. And I feel like it didn't echo um, the current times of what a woman leader is anymore because there are a lot of strong female leaders and they actually shine during the pandemic so that should be that should be like a good example for this question as well and given that this question actually has a context that's more controversial based on recent events you could for example like strategically hint on that to make it a bolder answer. The capabilities of a women leader have been questioned recently, which I thought would not be questioned anymore in the year 2020. As pageant candidates, we are tasked to redefine what feminism is every year, so we have to update that, update ourselves with where women are now. So that is my challenge for our future candidates. And now we have Miss Globe Maureen Montaigne, but I'll put her side by side by Ms. with Miss Grand International Samantha Panilio as well because I feel like they gave 
similar answers to their questions where they shared their experience helping out other people during the pandemic which I greatly admire these ladies for because they were able to really give back during the pandemic and share their story as well with other people and what surprised me though is how good of a speaker Maureen Montaigne is. I love how she can just connect with people on a deeper level, even though we have all, we rarely hear her talk, actually. That's why I was actually really caught by surprise. As for Sam Pandilio, she has always been a good speaker, and she was also one of my picks for Miss Most Improved during my workshop with Catriona Gray for Binibining Pilipinas, and she, I found her to be a really well-spoken girl and someone with a fast learning curve and as you can see that her journey in Binibini is really gradual she's a fighter and she has um, slowly but surely made her way to the top that's why she got to earn the crown of MGI so congratulations Maureen and Sam and now I am so excited to talk about her she is my favorite girl in the Q&A portion she is none other than our Miss Intercontinental Cindy Obanita I have chosen celebrity guest panelist Mr. Michael Cinco kindly turn to the screen to see your question Hello and good evening to you, Bini Bini. Here's my question. How important are luxury items like bags, clothes, and jewelry for a woman when the national economy is down and struggling? In life, we always find ourselves at a crossroad of choices. Women always have a choice whether to prioritize luxury items when, while we are facing a pandemic, and also they have a choice to embrace a concept of a new beautiful, which is responsive to the needs of the time, adaptive to the change of times. And I think I would choose to be that woman who understands the problems of the Philippines, the problems of my community, so that we would be able to uplift each other. And I would be that kind of woman who would comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. My Gabi is saying, very well said and thank you. so obviously it's I think it's a unanimous decision for the Philippines that this is the favorite answer for the night and I would also like to comment the question coming from Michael Cinco by the way which may seem like it's shallow materialistic but I feel like there's something profound about it as well especially since you know, we were really stripped of material things during the pandemic. And the fact that Cindy was able to answer this in a very profound way just gives, just makes the question all the more beautiful because these are guilty pleasures we don't really talk about or we feel bad talking about or feel bad just feeling it, you know, na, why do I want to buy something when some a lot of other people can't even buy food, can't even afford basic necessities. As for Cindy's answer, I love how she doesn't even stop. Tuloy -tuloy lang talaga siya. Nobody can stop this girl. I love how she used the keywords responsive, adaptive, like there are so many taglines actually in her answer. Um, and I love how she ended her answer with comforting the afflicted and afflicting the comfortable. I actually took a few days to try to get that. Maybe I'll ask Cindy and invite her personally here on what she meant by that. But in my own interpretation, the part where she said afflicting the comfortable, I think it's more of, um, you know, disturbing people from their comfort zone and asking them to see and look at other people who need help. So that's my interpretation. But that was that was like a really deep quote, Cindy. Like I want to find out how you actually came up with that. And I I actually feel a bit sad that it didn't make it to the time, like the chime, the buzzer sound, because I would have wanted to digest that. Like I wonder if the judges caught that actually. But now that I'm rewatching it, I'm like, ano nga ba ibig sabihin niya about that? 
And I also admire how she cemented her answer in such a way that I choose, like we all have a choice, but I choose to be this kind of woman. So I feel like that could be a really good tagline for the next Bini Bini edition of Andiba. What do you guys think? And finally, we have Bini Bini Pilipinas International, Hannah Arnold. Hi, Hannah. Hello. Given the reach and power of social media, do you believe that genuine freedom of speech exists in the Philippines nowadays? Why or why not? First of all, freedom of speech is a basic human right that we all must remember. And it is important for a democracy. And with our upcoming election, we definitely need free speech. For example, on Twitter, we are limited to few characters. And what I have seen from these tweets has been powerful and has helped me think about who I would like to vote for in the upcoming election. Thank you. So I feel like Hannah's answer wasn't necessarily the strongest one for this batch because she just, I think she just needed a few more phrases or sentences that to really like solidify her answer and make it more whole, make it sound more complete. Uh, but I do really appreciate that she immediately connected um, free speech to the upcoming elections, which is very important. She also talked about her experience of becoming a more informed voter. So I feel like it was a very practical answer and it it was a smart strategy to immediately connect such a broad topic to a more specific and particular topic instead that reflects the current events also. So overall, it's a very good answer. But this review won't be complete without us actually getting into the controversial question of the king of talk, Tito Boy Abunda. Celebrity guest panelist, Mr. Boy Abunda. Kindly turn back to the screen to see your question. Bini Bini, good evening. And this is your question. Ngayon, madalas nating naririnig na it's okay not to be okay. My question is, when is it okay not to be okay? And when is it not okay to be not okay? Can I just share that when I heard this question on stage, my heart sank for Karen because Double questions. I haven't actually really encountered double questions in pageantry. Like, as a candidate, I would actually think, which question do I answer first and do I have to answer both? And since I want to make sure that I get a crown, I need to answer both questions. But at the same time, is it enough time for 30 seconds to give a very, very smashing answer and win myself a crown? So. Yeah, it, it was a wave of anxiety on stage, actually, after that. You know, sometimes it's hard to move on, especially that if we lost our loved ones, when we're depressed, when we have anxiety. But most of all, when we want to move forward in life. You know, my favorite saying in a movie, Disney, Inside Out, is embrace your sadness. Because in embracing your sadness, you will feel uh, you will you will feel happiness afterwards. Thank you. Thank you, candidate number fifteen. I was very very mindful about the question and answer portion to not give out comments after the answers of the girls because I didn't want to show bias or influence the judges' decisions or make the girls feel a different way. But I feel like Karen needed a little bit of saving from that very very difficult question that is why I actually acknowledged what a difficult question it was and she answered it quite gracefully so good job to you Karen regardless because nakabuo ka pa rin ang sagot to that very difficult question and now let's talk more about that so Tito Boy's question is actually very beautiful diba? Parang it's not every day that you think now when is it not okay to not be okay as Especially since people are really um, pushing, advocating for mental health awareness. So this question could have either been the best question in pageant history if the outcome is that Karen Laurie actually 
gets a crown and even better if she gets the top crown in answering this very difficult question but since you have a front runner a girl who pretty much has cemented her position you know to get a placement um, in the finals night and didn't get crowned at the end of the night, the question earned the ire of a lot of people. So it, I feel like it was really based on outcome. So how do you deal with a question like this? Okay, so I, the first strategy that I could think of is to disregard the first question. Now, when is it okay to not be okay? Because I feel like it's already the dialogue in the recent two to three years that it's okay not to be okay everyone already has been consoled with that like it's already talked about what we don't talk about though is when is it not okay to not be okay so as a candidate if i would want to get an edge i need to be quick and focus on that second question instead so i would acknowledge the first question in passing but most of my time would be dedicated to the second question so in that way if you're faced with a tricky question like this you have to take control like be at the wheel and maneuver where you want the question to lead towards to so that's the power that you have as the candidate and a lot of you have been asking me actually to answer this question the first Thing that came to my mind actually that night was um, it's not okay to not be okay when other people need you to be strong because those are the moments that not only build your character but boost the morale of the people around you as well so that's a short of it but <laughs> Si bakla. <laughs> pero kasi it's a beautiful question naman talaga. Di ko talaga mabigilan. And pero I don't know if I was the one um, given only 30 seconds if I would be able to put it so eloquently like that. So I would like to um, congratulate Karen still for all that grace under pressure. And she even got to insert a quote for that. So Karen, baka naman din next year. <laughs> Sali ka ulit. <laughs> so there you have it. Wala na ako utang sa inyo guys. That's my question and answer review for Binibining Pilipinas. And I think that's also my last installment for the Binibining Pilipinas series I'm doing here on my channel. If you've loved my content so far, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification button so that you won't have to miss an episode. I will still be coming up with a lot more exciting content for you guys and road to 100,000 na tayo. Woo! So keep sharing and liking and I super duper appreciate your feedback you guys. Promise you keep me going and you motivate me to do this and to do better. Thank you so much. At ito po si Nicole Cordobes na nag-iiwan ng kasabihang it is not the crown that makes a queen but the queen who makes the crown. And I thank you. Stay safe everyone.